Hi children, this is Sheikh Yusuf. Welcome back to video lecture. Hope you all are good. Children, in previous video lecture, we had started second ch chapter of geography that is the structure of the earth. In previous topic, you have learnt about the three concentric layers of the earth that are the crust, the mantle and the core. In this topic, you learnt about the various characteristics of all the three layers like their depth, their mineral composition, temperature and density as well. Children, today our topic is rocks and minerals and types of rocks. Minerals. What are minerals? Minerals are naturally in organic substances found in the earth's crust with having definite chemical composition and physical properties. Minerals are of two types, metallic minerals and non-metallic minerals. Metallic minerals are those minerals which contain metals in it. For example, iron, gold, copper, etc. Non-metallic minerals are those minerals which do not contain any metal in it. For example, coal, petroleum, natural gas, salt, limestone, all these are the examples of non-metallic minerals. Children, there are about 2000 known minerals in the earth's surface. But our earth is mostly composed of some few minerals. These minerals are classified or identified on the basis of their few characteristics like on the basis of their color, on the basis of their texture, texture means shape of the minerals and on the basis of their hardness because minerals can be as hard as a diamond, minerals can be as soft as a salt or halite and on the basis of luster, luster simply means shine of the minerals. Now, rocks. What are rocks? Rocks are aggregate of minerals. They do not have definite chemical composition. Children, here is a difference. Minerals have definite chemical composition, but rocks do not have definite chemical composition. Now, what does aggregate mean? Children, aggregate means that the rocks are made up of different minerals but there are some common rock forming minerals that are found in the rocks they are quartz feldspar and mica children see this picture there is a rock granite but it consists of these three minerals, quartz, feldspar, and mica. Children, see this one more picture. Again, this rock consists of only two minerals, that is feldspar and quartz. We can say that rocks can contain more than one minerals, but it has been seen that 
most of the rocks are composed of only three minerals that is feldspar quartz and mica children there are some rocks which contain metals in large quantities such rocks are called ores now what is a, an ore how can we define an ore ore is defined an accumulation of any mineral in large quantities mixed with other elements each mineral has its own ore for example iron has its ore that is known as hematite aluminium has its ore that is known as bauxite but these ores are economically very important for us because these ores do contain any metal in large quantities and when these ores are extracted from the rocks then they are taken to the industries for the process known as smelting smelting process means simply giving heat to these minerals where the original metal is being obtained or we can say the pure metal is obtained after the process of smelting now types of rocks children on the basis of formation of rocks they are classified into three types that is igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks igneous rocks what are igneous rocks the term igneous is derived from the latin word ignis meaning fire now here the term has been used fire children you should know that deep inside the earth there is a molten magma that is there is a molten material that is known as magma and when this magma reaches on the earth's surface here on the earth's surface it is called as lava from this material from this fiery material igneous rock is formed now how is an igneous rock formed when the molten magma reaches the earth's surface through volcanic eruption it cools down either inside the earth or on the surface and becomes a solid rock such rocks are called igneous rocks children when the magma reaches on the earth's surface and it cools down either inside the earth or above the earth's surface after the cooling and solidification of this magma and rock is formed that is known as igneous rock but children here we came to know that the rocks the igneous rocks can either be formed inside the earth or outside the earth's surface or above the earth's surface the rocks which are formed below the earth's surface are known as intrusive igneous rocks intrusive igneous rocks have large crystals in it why because they cool down slowly why intrusive igneous rocks cool down slowly because still these rocks cool down inside the earth the temperature still remains there high some examples of intrusive igneous rocks are granite and dolerite extrusive igneous rocks are the rocks that are formed above the earth's surface but the difference is that these rocks have small crystals in it why when this rock reaches to the outer earth surface 
it gets exposed to the outer environmental condition. The rapid cooling takes place or these rocks cool down quickly and the small crystals are formed in extrusive igneous rocks. The examples of extrusive igneous rocks are basalt and obsidian. Children, igneous rocks are also known as basic or primary rocks. Why? It is because all other rocks are directly or indirectly formed from the igneous rocks. Now children, second type of rock is sedimentary rock. Children, before learning in detail about the sedimentary rocks, let me make you clear the concept of weathering. It is because of the process of weathering that facilitates the material for the formation of sedimentary rocks. This is why we need to first learn the process of weathering. What is weathering? Weathering is the process that breaks down rock on earth's surface. But weathering takes place in three ways. That is biological weathering, physical weathering and chemical weathering. Now children I will explain you what is biological weathering. Biological weathering simply refers where a biotic component causes the breaking of rocks. For example, when seeds sprout in a rock crack and begin to grow roots, they exert pressure on rock walls and expand, and expand the cracks. This leads to breaking of rocks. Children sometimes Burrowing animals and humans also contribute to this process, the breaking of rocks. Together, it is known as biological weathering. Another type of weathering that causes the breaking of rocks, that is known as physical weathering. How does the physical weathering take place? Children, you need to know that Rocks are exposed on the earth's surface due to the difference in day and night temperatures, expansion and contraction of minerals takes place in the rocks. In this process, the outer layers of the rocks get peeled off or we can say the outer layers of the rocks get broke down into small pieces as it is clearly visible from this rock. The another way how the rock gets broke down through the, through the physical weathering. See another example children clearly see this picture. Due to the fall in temperature at night water freezes and expands. Consequently, the crack also enlarges under pressure. Gradual widening of the cracks leads to a breaking of rocks or leads to disintegration of rocks. Children clearly see how the freezing water enlarges the cracks and ultimately leads to the disintegration of rocks. Children, this was all about the weathering process. Now let us discuss in detail about the sedimentary rocks. How they are formed. The small pieces of rocks are called sediments. Children you should know that these small pieces of rocks have been formed already, already on the surface because of the weathering process. Now, these small pieces of rocks are called sediments. 
These sediments are usually transported by rivers and deposited on the floors of lakes, seas or oceans. Due to heavy pressure, they get compressed and are cemented together to form layers and such rocks are called sedimentary rocks. So this is how we can define the sedimentary rocks. Children, let me explain you very clearly the formation of sedimentary rocks with the help of this picture. Children, see this picture. In this picture, you are observing the flow of river. Children, see this river. It has two points. The source and the mouth. Now, what is source? The source of river means where from the river originates. And the source of river is always located in high mountains. And from its source, the river flows through the mountains and then it leaves the mountains, it reaches to the plain areas and ultimately a river meets to a big water body. That big water body can be a lake, ocean or sea and that becomes the mouth of the river. Children, river has two points, source and mouth. Source means where from the river originates. And mouth means where the river meets to a large water body. That large water body can be a ocean, lake or sea. Children, you also need to know that during its course from sourced mouth, a river performs three types of activities. That is erosion, transportation and deposition. Before making you clear about the erosion, transportation and deposition. Children, there are some other forces of nature like running water, moving ice, winds and waves that also constantly break down the rocks on the earth's surface into the smaller fragments. That means these forces of nature further break down the rocks into small pieces. And these small pieces of rocks are called sediments. And these sediments are of different sizes. Sediments are of different sizes like gravel, sand, clay and silt. Children, now we have the different types of sediments like gravel, sand, clay and silt. After getting these sediments, now the running water performs its three types of activities or I can say that the river performs its three activities that is erosion, transportation and deposition. What is erosion? Erosion means removal of rock particles from one place to another place. And river also does transportation. What is transportation? Transportation means carrying of these sediments through the running water. When the river carries these sediments, then the river also deposits these sediments that is known as deposition. What is deposition? Deposition means accumulation of these sediments. Children, you need to know a river always carries with it 
all these sediments that is gravel, sand, silt and clay. But in these sediments, some are heavier particles like gravel and sand particles. These heavier sediments or these heavier rock particles get settled down on the river beds. Children, there are also some small sediments or some small rock particles like sand, silt and clay particles. They are almost mixed with the river. And river water carries these sediment, sand, silt and clay with it. And when the river reaches to its mouth, a river deposits all these sediments at the mouth of the river in layers. These sediments get deposited in layers. And the formation of layer is a process of thousands of years. When these sediments get deposited in layers, a pressure is exert, exerted by these overlying material. Because of this pressure, the rock gets compressed and becomes cemented, resulting in the formation of sedimentary rocks. As the deposition takes place in layers or strata, sedimentary rocks are also called as stratified rocks. Some examples of sedimentary rocks are sandstone, limestone, clay, shale, chalk and gypsum. Children, see. One more picture. It clearly shows in the seabed how the compression takes place and because of that compression and compaction a sedimentary rock is formed in the ocean or sea beds. When the sedimentary rocks are formed under these sedimentary rocks we find some Fossils. What are fossils? Fossils are the dead remains of plants and animals. Now, how these fossils get formed? Children, you all know that in the ocean, seas, lakes, or simply I may say that in the big water bodies, there are also some marine organisms like plants and animals. They also get dyed under these layers of sedimentary rocks. And when they get dyed under these sedimentary rocks, they also get converted into fossil fuels. Because a chemical process takes place when they get dyed under the sedimentary rock layers then a chemical process takes place and these dead remains of plants and animals get converted into fossil fuels for example we have natural gas petroleum these are all known as fossil fuels and coal itself is a sedimentary rock and these fossil fuels are the great sources of energy in the today's world. Now children, metamorphic rocks. The term metamorphic is derived from the word metamorphosis, which means change of form. In this type of rock, there is a change of form. Children, let us know what is this change of form. When igneous and sedimentary rocks are subjected to extreme heat and pressure, they undergo a complete change in their form 
and characteristics such rocks are called metamorphic rocks children a change takes place in the characteristics of the already existing rocks that are the igneous and sedimentary rocks here it means when the already existing rocks like igneous and sedimentary rocks gets a heat and pressure the mineral composition and other characteristics of these rocks get changed and a metamorphic rock is formed children now the question is where from this heat comes due to which a change occurs in the already existing rocks children you need to know that volcanic activity tectonic movements are simply due to heat and pressure deep inside the earth causes the change in the already existing rocks and when it causes the change in the already existing rocks and new rock is then formed that is known as metamorphic rocks or simply i can say that change occurs in the sedimentary and igneous rocks because of the extreme heat and pressure that comes from the volcanic activity or tecton tectonic movements are all simply that comes from uh, due to heat and pressure deep inside the earth children we have now few examples of metamorphic rocks for example marble slate gneiss and quartzite are the good examples of metamorphic rocks for example marble is a metamorphic rock but this rock has been formed from limestone and limestone is a sedimentary rock next example of metamorphic rock is slate slate is a metamorphic rock but it has been formed from the shale nice nice is a metamorphic rock but it has been formed from the granite and here the granite is an igneous rock this is how all the three types of rocks are formed now children let me recapitulate some important points that we learnt in this topic minerals are naturally inorganic substances found in earth's surface then we learnt about the rocks children rocks are aggregate of minerals that means rocks are made up of different minerals types of rocks there are three types of rocks igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamor and metamorphic rocks igneous rocks are formed due to cooling and solidification of magma either inside the earth surface or above the earth surface and igneous rocks are formed in two ways intrusive igneous rocks they are they are formed below the earth surface and extrusive igneous rocks they are formed above the earth surface sedimentary rocks sedimentary rocks are formed from the deposition and compaction of sediments in the floors of oceans seas and lakes and children you need to know that sedimentary rocks are formed in layers because that is why they are also known as stratified rocks now metamorphic rocks when igneous and sedimentary rocks get subjected to heat and pressure deep inside the earth a new rock is formed known as metamorphic rocks children this was all about the rocks and minerals and three types of rocks that are igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks children thank you stay safe stay blessed